now we will read about the leprosy leprosy is a chronic granulomatous disease and this is known to the mankind from very ancient times uh, and uh, the discussion of this leprosy is given some ancient textbooks of many countries as well so this leprosy is caused by mycobacterium leprae which is also called as the hansen's bacilli based on the name of its discoverer and as it is called as hansen's bacilli that's why the disease which is leprosy that is also known as hansen's disease okay if you see the incubation period of leprosy the incubation period is very long that is 5 to almost 5 to 7 years long so why is uh, why uh, does it have so much long incubation period for that you have to see the generation time the incubation period of a pathogen depends upon its generation type most of the times like in case of the mycobacterium tuberculosis the generation time is very short that's why the incubation period of mycobacterium tuberculosis is also very short but the mycobacterium lepre has a generation time of about 12 to 14 days that is such a long period of generation time that's why it has a very long incubation period of about 5 to 7 years if we see the classification of the leprosy then the leprosy has been classified differently in different decades uh, so there are basically three classifications the first classification that we got was ridley joplin classification then we got the madrid classification and then we follow now is the indian classification so in the ridley joplin classification the different stages of leprosy disease are the LL stage, BL stage, BB stage, BT stage and TT stage. So LL means lepromatous leprosy. Okay. And BL means borderline lepromatous stage. BB means borderline stage and BT means borderline tuberculoid and TT means tuberculoid leprosy. So these are the five stages according to the ridley joplin classification. This is sometimes asked in the viva. That is uh, this classification uh, classifications are not very much important for the exam point of view but they are sometimes asked in the viva so that's why i am telling uh, you all here next comes the madrid classification in which the the leprosy disease has four stages lepromatous borderline indeterminate and the tuberculoid stage then we have indian classification also where we have lepromatous stage, lepromatous leprosy, borderline leprosy, indeterminate leprosy, pure neuritic leprosy, and the tuberculoid leprosy. If we, uh, if you read uh, all of these uh, in a relative manner, then you can easily remember the uh, classification of the different stages of the bacilli. But having read all these classification what we come to know is that the clinical classification is the most important classification that we have to read for the treatment uh, and the epidemiological point of view so why is uh, this clinical classification so important this is important because the the treatment plan plan that the indian government or the um, leprosy association of india has decided is based on this clinical classification okay so according to the clinical classification so yes this is used for the treatment of the patient and the clinical classification is uh, dividing the leprosy into two types one is the posse bacillary leprosy and the other one is the multi bacillary leprosy so there are certain features that we have to see to classify the leprosy in the clinical setting so uh, for posse bacillary leprosy the skin lens number should be in between 1 to 5 there should not be any nerve involvement and the slit skin smear should be negative we will see the slit is uh, slit skin smear when we come to lab diagnosis but uh, for the time being you have to know that uh, if there is slit skin smear negative then it will be a posse bacillary leprosy okay and then we come to the multi bacillary leprosy what are the features of that so for multi bacillary leprosy the skin lens have to be more than or equal to six okay there should be one or more nerve involvement most common nerve to involve is the ulnar nerve and uh, the slit skin smear should 
have to be positive so if any one of these three features are present then we will classify the condition or the leprosy as the multibacillary leprosy remember if we are getting uh, skin we are getting uh, skin is uh, lians 1 to 5 and there is no nerve involvement but there is slit skin smear positive then how will we classify it so in that case we have to classify it as the multibacillary leprosy remember uh, if there is any feature of the multibacillary leprosy and the other features are of possibacillary leprosy then we will always have to go for the multibacillary leprosy okay so uh, for example again i am giving one more example that if there are skin lesions more than equal to 6 but there is no nerve involvement no slit skin smear uh, i mean slit skin smear is negative and there is no nerve involvement but skin lesions are more than equal to 6 then we will classify it as multibacillary leprosy okay so next is the difference So uh, we have read according to the um, regular Joplin classification the two extreme points of the leprosy are the lepromatous leprosy and the tuberculoid leprosy. So there should must how will we differentiate between these two uh, stages there should must be some differences. So these differences I have written here and these are sometimes asked uh, in the theory exam also. So that's why uh, from exam point of view this becomes an important question as well so uh, how can we differentiate between the lepromatous and the tuberculoid leprosy for that we have to see different features like if we see clinically the lepromatous leprosy is a multibacillary leprosy but uh, the tuberculoid is a posi bacillary leprosy having known that the lepromatous is a multibacillary leprosy while the tuberculoid is a posi bacillary leprosy we can find all other features by our own for example if there is multivacillary leprosy then biological index will have to be more okay posi means the uh, answer is in its name posi means very few that means 0 to 1 positive okay so multi means many so that's why 4 to 6 so by that we can remember the biological index as well now coming to the skin lesions in multivacillary we have seen that skin lesions are many and many means more than equal to six uh, skin lesions are there that's why here the skin lesions are many in the lepromatous leprosy and as when there will be many uh, skin lesions obviously the margin will be irregular and posi in posi bacillary leprosy we have seen that there are few skin lesions so if there will be few skin lesions the regular uh, margin will be regular okay then we come to the nerve lesions this thing you have to remember that uh, nerve lien in the lepromatous leprosy appears late but the uh, and also the as the nerve lien appears late that's why hypothesia that means uh, loss of sensation at that skin lien okay hypopigmented skin lien the sensation at that hypopigmented uh, skin liens uh, is that appears very late because the nerve involvement is occurring very late in the lepromatous leprosy so that loss of a sensation and that skin lien is called as hypostheesia okay and this hypostheesia appears late in case of the lepromatous leprosy while in tuberculoid leprosy what we see that the nerve lien appears very early and hence the hypostheesia also appear very early okay while well, coming to the cell mediated immunity so if we see that uh, in lepromatous leprosy there is multibacillary leprosy that means the bacillary load is very high that means the cell mediated immunity must have been very low okay so by that we can remember that the cmi in the lepromatous leprosy is impaired or low okay and uh, in tuberculoid since there are very less bacillary load there is very less bacillary load that's why the cmi uh, will be normal okay and we know that the lepromine test or we will know in the lab diagnosis okay so lepromine test is dependent on the cmi status so if uh, the cmi is very low then the lepromine test becomes negative while cmi is normal then the 
lepromine test will be positive so by that relation we can remember all the differences between the lepromatous leprosy and the tuberculoid leprosy now coming to the complications of the leprosy so uh, complications of leprosy are of two types either it will cause deformities or it will cause lepra reaction or it may cause both of them okay so these two complications are seen along with leprosy deformities and the allergic responses deformities are seen in 25 percent of the untreated cases okay the deformities by epidemiological studies we have come to know that deformities are seen in 25 percent of the untreated cases and what are those deformities and where do we see those deformities so those deformities we see in the face in the hand and in the foot so in the face the deformity is that there, there will be loss of eyeballs uh, sorry eyebrows and and also eyelashes and there will be saddle nose and there will be corneal ulcers along with opacity okay so these are the uh, complications that we or the deformity we see in the face while the deformity that we see in the hand are the claw hand and the wrist drop why is that because the uh, bacilli is involving the nerves that's why and the most commonly involved, involved nerve is the ulnar nerve that's why we see there is their claw hand and there is drop as a deformity in the complications of the leprosy in foot we see foot drop and the plantar ulcer why do we see ulcers ulcers corneal ulcers and the foot ulcers again the same reason is same that the bacilli uh, um, causes uh, damage to the nerve okay so as it causes damage to the nerve that's why there occurs corneal ulcers and following corneal, corneal ulcer there occurs opacity and uh, for the similar uh, reason that the bacilli uh, bacilli causes damage to the nerves uh, there occurs plantar ulcer as well okay so these are the deformities that we see in the face hand and foot as a complication of the leprosy now we come to the allergic response which are also called as the lepra reactions so lepra reactions are nothing but the allergic response occurring in the course of the treatment of leprosy occurring in the course of treatment of the leprosy okay and uh, in that uh, lepra reaction we have two types of lepra reactions which are which are type 1 type 1 lepra reactions and the type 2 lepra reactions so uh, uh, so difference is sometimes as in the viva so type 1 lepra reactions are type 4 hypersensitivity reactions while the type 2 lepra reactions are the type 3 hypersensitivity reactions okay so how will we remember these type 4 or type 3 hypersensitivity uh, reactions so see here uh, if we add 1 plus 4 it comes out to be 5 if we add 2 plus 3 it comes out to be 5 so in both the cases it is equal to it is equal to 5 so by that we can remember that the type 1 uh, lepra reaction is a uh, type 4 hypersensitivity reaction while type 2 lepra reaction is a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction type 1 uh, lepra reaction that is seen in borderline leprosy while the type 2 is seen in the lepromatous leprosy type 1 in type 1 the predominant cell is the type 1 helper t cell while in type 2 lepra reaction the predominant cell is type 2 helper t cell okay and if you see the occurrence of this type 1 and type 2 lepra reactions which are nothing but the allergic responses then we see that uh, the type 2 lepra reaction occurs during start of the treatment of leprosy while the type 1 lepra reaction occurs if it occurs before treatment then it will lead to the lepromatous leprosy okay this is the conversion of the disease according to the treatment and if this allergic response occurs after treatment then it will go to the tuberculoid leprosy stage this is all about the leprosy next in next video we will talk about the lab